Hey, what's up, guys? In this video, I'm going to be talking about books. Books are pretty neat. They have words in them, and they work even if the power is not on, which kind of happens here from time to time. And these are books pertaining to music, uh, production. Uh, they're educational books. I don't read fiction, really. Um, and then I'm going to get into other kind of books that I enjoy reading, and then two that I read for recreation, or that I'm currently reading for recreation, just for the fun of it. So, yeah, let's start off with the first one. I gotta do this one. This one's pretty great. Uh, Ableton sent this to me. This is uh, Making Music 74 Creative Strategies for Electronic Music Producers. It has the Ableton logo on it, and it's written by Dennis DeSantis, who also wrote the Ableton Manual, and uh, it's actually like really cool. So I'll, I'll give you an example. So it has like on one side it has problem, and on the other side it has solution. So it's like common problem solutions, and there's like yeah, just a lot of like really cool, interesting um, things to read in here. Lots of fun kind of exercises and uh, kind of new ways to get ideas going. And yeah, I, I, I highly recommend it. And uh, the pages smell nice. It smells really nice for some reason. Really good. And it feels nice too. So um, that is a book number one recommended. I'll just set that here. Second book is a series of three books. So these are the, the essentials written by Michael Hewitt. So there's three books here. And there's the first one, which is Harmony for Computer Musicians. This goes through, you know, how to write harmonies, I guess, uh, triads, conversions. And what's really interesting is the keyword here for computer musicians. So it's not necessarily um, showing you like sheet music or like guitar chords. It's actual, let me find it here. It actually shows you like piano roll stuff. So it's like super useful. And uh, I, I've been reading these books and flipping through for like years now, and really great, like super easy to understand for, you know, people who are like me who kind of struggle with this sort of thing. Um, I wasn't formally trained in uh, music. Um, I took music in high school, played the trumpet, and you know, but this generally applies to uh, computer music um, composition, which is kind of applying what you've learned in the first one and like making full songs um, again um, in relation to uh, the software that we're all used to using let me just find another thing here yeah has all sorts of stuff and like creative use of effects it's like how to get a song put together composition you know pretty self-explanatory and then music theory for computer musicians. Music theory is usually freaking dry, and it's like sheet music, and you know you're you're listening to guys with coattails and wigs and stuff like that. But this really applies to um, you know computer musicians: chord intervals, octave doubling, and spacing, which is like super duper interesting. And these three books. Um, the music theory, or the the four uh, computer musicians you can get on Amazon, uh, and they're written by Michael Hewitt, and there's three of them. I recommend all three. Um, good thing to spend your Christmas money on. Um, I've had, and I've had them for years, and they're very useful. Moving on. This one, Mastering Audio, The Art and Science by Bob Katz. Um, you can tell that I've read the heck out of this one and uh, it just goes through uh, mastering and it's kind of a it's kind of a if you're like new to audio it's a it's a good it's a good read um, goes through um, gear and things like that EQing like what you know linear phase is and how things work and jitter it's more of a more of a I guess a, a practical approach um, jitter separating the the myths and the mysteries. So, really interesting book. Um, I actually got it at a, a thrift store. I found it at a thrift store for two dollars. So, a steal of a deal. Um, and uh, yeah, I'd recommend this one as well. Uh, Bob Katz is a very good uh, mastering engineer. Talks about a bunch of stuff. Uh, 
what else do we need? Well, we need books on Ableton. So um, I only have uh, Ableton 9 uh, books currently, um, but these were a great reference um, when I was putting together my Ableton course, just to kind of, it just basically goes through uh, everything. Um, also, what I should do is recommend uh, reading the Ableton documentation, also really good. But yeah, just uh, kind of a start to finish how to, how to use Ableton Live, um, even uh, Ableton Live 8 and 9, the, the methodology and how to learn still applies to Ableton 10. And uh, yeah, it just goes through everything really well laid out. Um, and the, the order of this book, um, the order of this book really lends to like not confusing people. So like the order of it is very sequential and it, it helps you along your way. And uh, written by a certified trainer, which I am not, but maybe I will be one day. Maybe not. I don't know. It's kind of my good luck charm to not be Ableton certified. But anyway, uh, good books on Ableton. You got to have at least one, just as a as a quick reference. Um, so yeah, there's that. Here's one that I picked up as well. This one. Um, highly recommended it's called uh, the complete idiot's guide which is i'm one of them uh music theory um second edition written by michael miller and this one it's uh it applies to um it's, it's a good so how i learn is i have to read things over and over again in different ways and then eventually i'll get it so uh it just goes through for example creating a, a progression um but it is not, it's not geared towards um, computer musicians, but it's still valuable um, in its way, in its own way. And it's really, really well laid out and um, a pretty, pretty good book. And, you know, eventually when I become proficient enough, I will be teaching some uh, music theory stuff. But I'm not going to do that. There's other people right now that are, you know, umpteen times better at explaining that than I, I just kind of wrestle with it until I know it works. But I, I understand, you know, fifths and stuff like that and the, the circle of fifths and sevenths and octaves and stuff like that. I have a basic grasp, but these books really have uh, helped me and uh, really developed my ear. I can match things and stuff like that on paper. You got to have an old school book. And um, this book was uh released i believe it was released in 2002 give me a sec oh 1997 so this is a uh, dance music programming secrets everything was a secret back then um you would buy this book if you're just like oh, i went to a rave in goa and i came back and i want to you know start making electronic music so it's uh, geared towards uh drum and bass techno house ambient hip-hop and garage and there's some trip hop in here too all genres that don't really exist anymore but uh it's really it's really a, a trip through time they use uh screenshots from cubase but uh the drum programming still applies to this day and it's really uh really interesting to kind of look through and see the methodology of how people uh, did things back in the day and it also has a has the, has the cd in it still so lots of Lots of drum samples, because everyone needs more drum samples, and that is Programming Secrets by Roger Brown. And, okay, so now I'm going to get into kind of books that might not apply to uh, the average person watching this, but they're books that I'm reading currently. And, uh, hold on. Yep. So this book is called uh, Music, Mind, and Education, written by Keith Swanwick. It's a book that deals with uh, the musical experience, music education, and uh, how children learn music through imitation and how that can be applied to learning music. It's a really kind of interesting book written, I believe, in the 80s. And uh, he's, a, he's an interesting guy. Um, I think it was 1988. Yep, 1988. And, you know, he really dislikes disco <laughs> for some reason. It's, uh, he, he refers to it as overwhelming. Uh, but, yeah, it's just a, a book about music development and music education in the curriculum in uh, England. And, I don't know, it's just uh, one of those interesting books that I found. I was like, I'm going to read this. And, you know, I happen to be a 
somewhat of a music music educator, and reading this kind of helped me um, educate the musics better. And uh, yeah, that's music, mind, and education. It's like a really interesting book. Yeah. <clears throat> Here's another one that I found. So this is a, a book written in the 60s, uh, Communication and Culture by Alfred G. Smith. It deals with the, the science of communication because I use communication to teach. Um, it goes, it, it talks about like a lot of really interesting things like uh, verbal and nonverbal communication and like how we're unaware of the nonverbal communication that we portray. Different cultures have different um, verbal communication and like the subtle ways that we communicate. So like pitch and saying the same thing over and over again can change its meaning. So like he's a fan of Jordan Peterson or he's a fan of Jordan Peterson, just as an example. It's uh, really well put together and you know, it's. It's uh, for a person like me who never um, uh, pursued anything really academic. This is very much a, I guess, a, written by a university professor. I guess there's a trend there. But anyway, a uh, really good book. Um, super interesting about, you know, just the science of how we uh, make noises with our mouths and uh, relay information in culture. And this was written before the internet. So it was really interesting, their view on it. And they talk about the potential for mass communication in the future. Really interesting. Okay, so I guess two more. Um, what I read for pleasure. So, you know, typical um, Hunter S. Thompson book. Um, probably read this about 20 times. Just just his writing style is really interesting and like is not giving an Fness. And, you know, I can't really, I, you know, like getting into Andre S. Thompson, like I'm just going to have to let you figure it out on your own. Um, but kind of a, a f it's like you don't really know like what's true and what's not true. But uh, yeah, just a lot of really interesting writing. And it, and it, it kind of, kind of, it's like a pleasing way of reading. Can't explain it. But anyway, Andre S. Thompson, you got to have that. This uh, black book here, it's uh, Hitman by, oops, by Bret Hart. And uh, this is a really, really interesting read. Um, it, it delves through like the beginning of his life all the way to uh, um, like 1999, before he made his return. So he still wasn't on good terms with uh, Vince. But this book, um, this book really just puts things into perspective. It's like, you know. Uh, it's all about paying your dues and like the stories of like you know wrestling to like an empty empty seats in some country and not being paid and getting into trouble and stuff like that and it's just really it's really uh, uh, yeah you can't even he's, he's kind of a, a Canadian hero for those that that don't know really good uh, biography and um yeah just uh the the what it taught me is uh someone someone else's success doesn't take away from your success and you got to know when to put someone over you got to know to get the next generation ready that's kind of my platform and how i go about things in my life so those are the, the books the books of doom um, hope you enjoyed the video. Any other book recommendations that you have, please feel free to leave them in the comments. And uh, yeah, hope you guys enjoyed the video. Take care. Hope you learned stuff and have a good one.